All right, guys, welcome back to Brothers in Air. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to remove the barrel. And while we have the barrel removed, I'm also going to change the breech seal. And I'm due for a change. I like to change uh, my breech seal. I don't, I don't like to wait till they blow out uh, or necessarily go bad. Um, I just change them out every three, four months and kind of just keep a fresh one in there. So, um, like I said, while the barrel's removed, I'm going to do that. And then I'm also going to touch base uh, real quickly on barrel cleaning because a lot of guys have asked me in the comments and stuff, uh, how do you clean an air gun, or rather, how do I clean my air gun barrels? And uh, there seems to be a, a million and one ways to get the job done. You know, guys have uh, adopted and adapted all kinds of different techniques and, and found tricks and different things that work for them. Um, so I like to keep it simple and uh, I'm just going to show you what I do. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Um, the reason I'm going to show you how to remove the barrel is because there's two O-rings on the stem of the barrel in here that where it mounts into the block and seal it to the block. So eventually, uh, you, you know, O-rings don't last forever. Eventually you might need to change them. They're probably going to outlast most of the seals in your gun, uh, but eventually they will go bad. And I like to keep all the seals, you know, kind of on a, a, a yearly, buy, uh, you know, maybe every two years, uh, I find myself just kind of swapping some seals out. I don't really wait for them to go necessarily completely bad. Uh, it'd just be for one reason or another, I'm up in the gun, you know, so I'll just change it out while I'm in there or whatever, and, and uh, kind of just keep, keep good ones in there at all times. But um, anyhow, you can change the breech seal without removing the barrel. And, you know, I've got uh, a pick hook that I bent specially, so, you know, to a special angle so I can get in here and scoop them out real easy. And, uh, you, you know, you're just popping a new one back into the gland, you know, and just put it in till it, till it pops into place. And there's tons of videos out there about it and stuff. So, um, as you can see, I've already uh, removed the quiet energy shroud. I've actually been using a moderator now on the gun without the uh, quiet energy shroud for quite some time. So that's what you see here. But uh, we're gonna be starting from that point, moving forward with the shroud removed, and I've also removed my optic. So I did make a video uh, all about the shroud and how to remove it and stuff. So if you didn't know how to remove your shroud, you could reference that video. But anyhow, you've got to remove your optic uh, in order to access this stuff freely. And the only difference between the flash and the flash pup, be it the wood or the synthetic or whatever, is the optics rail on the pup. You've got to take the optics rail off before you can access the screws that hold the barrel in place. So that's the first thing we're going to do is take the optics rail off. And you need a two and a half millimeter Allen key to get the optics rail off. And I'm going to uh, start with this rear. I should have put my headlamp on just so I could see a little better, but we'll get her done. Now I'm going to loosen up this front one. Now the rear one screws directly into the block, uh, into the aluminum, and the front one is secured down by a little nut that's located right here inside the barrel band, the plastic there, that you'll see there's a little slot, there's a nut in there, and that's what this screw fixes down into. So I'm gonna set this up here. And now I'm gonna share with you a little trick. Uh, you don't have to do this, but uh, it's been helpful for me. And uh, it's something that I thought of not at first in the beginning. And uh, sometimes, you know, it could be a little bit of a headache. So. I think that this is helpful in eliminating uh, the guesswork and stuff like that, you know, and feeling your way as far as setting the barrel when you're reinstalling it and getting everything lined up perfectly uh, back in the same position that it was. So the trick is what I like to do is I'll take a marker. Now I've just found, you know, this color just works better than black. It's like a light blue. But anyways, what I will do is take a marker like this, real fine tip, you know, felt, and I'll draw a line crossways across the top of the barrel here, flush, you know, right up there against the block. So now I have a reference mark 
when I'm putting it back into the block and I'm reinstalling the barrel, now I have a reference mark as far as how far in to go. So now as far as how far in or out for the positioning, we've got a mark and we don't have to worry about it. And then what I'll do is I'll take and make a cross mark right across the top of the barrel. And then I'll take and look and line up my pin and I'll put a mark right on the block. And I'll just make sure that those marks are lined up really good and everything. So now I've got a mark that's going to show me where to reposition my barrel when I do the reinstallation for, you know, as far as how far in the block it needs to go, because you don't want to go too far. If you go too, too far, um, you're not going to be able to clip your uh, single shot tray back in anyhow. Uh, so you're going to know that way, but you want to get it uh, as close as possible as, as to where it was, you know, you don't want to have your port lined up with your barrel port and your transfer port. You don't want to have them uh, misaligned a little bit. Uh, your tune could change or whatever the case may be. So that's just a little trick. And uh, then, you know, you, you just push in the barrel to your line, line it up, the one that's flushed off with the block. And then you just wiggle your barrel left to right until you line up those two marks, the one on the block and the one on the top of the barrel. And now once you've got those two things lined up, you don't have to even, you know, look down into your holes and, uh, you know, visually try to line things up, you know, and stuff. You can just look here and see that your marks are lined up and then you can just crank and set down your set screws and you're good to go. You don't have, you basically eliminate the guesswork uh, if there is any. So let's, uh, I like to, let's make sure we're on safe here. I like to retract uh, the pellet probe on all my guns whenever I'm removing a barrel. You don't have to, but uh, I just like to. I like to just get it up and out of the way. So you need, again, uh, a two and a half millimeter Allen key and there's two set screws that hold the barrel and fix it down into the block. Now on the pup, the rear screw is a little bit shorter and it's recessed and that's just to accommodate um, the little nipple on the bottom of your plastic spacer there beneath the optics rail. So take note of that just so you don't uh, put the short one in first when you're doing your reinstall into the front and only to find that you've got uh, you, you can't get your rail set down into there, you know, because you got the screws backwards. But anyhow, I'm going to loosen up this back one. Like I said, two and a half millimeter Allen. And now I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the front one. The hole in between those that you see, um, now you're going to find that even on the flash or, or whatever, if you don't have the flash pup. And that's because it's all the same platform. It's all the same block. You know, they're using the same main block and then they're just printing flash or flash pup on the side. So what that is, is the hole. So if you've got, say, the flash and you wondered, well, what's this uh, hole here that seems to hold, you know, have no function or whatever, um, that's what that is. That's for the optics rail for the uh, flash pup setup so that the screw can go through there. And then that's what secures the screw. That's where that screw goes down into that middle hole. So you can just uh, disregard the middle hole. Um, and I got one of my guns, the flash, it came with a, a, a set screw in there to plug the hole and the other one, it didn't. So if there is a set screw in there, um, you're going to want to loosen it. But uh, in my case, on one of them, there wasn't. So anyhow, two screws, we've loosened up uh, the back one and I'm going to take out the front one now. You don't have to completely remove them, but that's what I'm going to do. So now we've got our set screws out. Like I said, you've got two O-rings on the stem of the barrel where it mounts in here. I don't recommend that you use a heavy scissoring motion, uh, you know, as you're pulling the barrel out and when you're reinstalling it. I would recommend that you just try your best to kind of slip it straight out and push it straight back in because that way when that front O-ring then is going over that semi-sharp surface of the transfer port uh, or the barrel port there, um, it seems to me that it, it, it will clip and cut a lot easier if you've added a rotation to the barrel as you're feeding it in. So anyhow, we got our set screws out. We're ready to remove the barrel. So I like to just brace my hand on the gun and then here and just kind of slip it straight out. And that's it. It's as easy as that. So now 
when it comes to uh, changing these two O-rings, you know, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just like any of your other ones, you're going to take a pick hook and go down into your gland and scoop out your old one, pop in some new ones, uh, maybe run something in there and run it around a couple times to make sure there's no twist in your O-rings. Um, but that's it. And I'm not going to change these because I did, in fact, change them like a month ago. So they're still uh, good to go. And now for this breech seal. Like I said, same as if the barrel was on the gun, uh, you're just going to reach down into there with your pick hook and get up under your O-ring. Drop my uh, pick hook on the ground. Let's try this again. <laughs> All right. So now I've got my O-ring out and I'm going to set this here because I don't want to get uh, any lint or fuzz or anything like that onto my uh, barrel O-rings. Excuse my coffee too, it's early, the sun just came up, so. I've been having some coffee. All right, let's see here, breech seal. It's a 1.5 by six millimeter O-ring. So I'm getting one here out of my little self-made rebuild kit. Get my coffee back up here into the mix. All right, now I don't put any, uh, if I was to change these O-rings on the, on the barrel stem here, I would take the new ones and I would coat them with some silicone grease reinstall them and then I would make sure there's a nice good sheen of silicone grease around them uh, just to aid for my install but when it comes to the breech seal I don't ever apply any grease or oil to it uh, I don't ever apply grease I just use the uh, super lube silicone oil and what I do is I it, it's harder to install it if it's all greasy and slippery you know so it's easier to install it if it's dry and then what I do is I just go in there and drop a drop of uh, silicone oil onto it. And then that's a regular part of my maintenance as well for the breech seal. Every time that I clean the barrel, I will go and take a drop of the super lube oil and drop onto the breech seal um, just to keep a nice, nice, uh, fresh lube on there, you know. So let's get this uh, new breech seal into here. All right, there we go. And that can be kind of tricky, popping it into place, you know, but you'll get the hang of it. All right, so now what I am going to do, since I'm reinstalling this, whoop, I am going to take just a little dab of silicone grease and reapply to these O-rings on the barrel stem here. And I'm using a very, very sparing amount and I'm just applying a light sheen to the outside of it. I'm not leaving any, any excess or any uh, extra, you know, just enough to give me a little bit of lubrication to aid with reinstalling the barrel. Now, if this is your first time ever taking out your barrel, you may want to, since you've got it out, go in here and uh, clean out the block nice, you know, and make sure there's no mucked up stuff in there or any, any uh, debris or metal or anything from the machining process which you uh, unfortunately sometimes will find. Uh, so like I said, it's your first time, maybe get up in there and clean it out, but I'm not gonna do that because I know that mine's already nice and clean in here. So then we're just gonna take our barrel and feed it through the band here, being careful not to scratch our air reservoir. And then you're just gonna feed it back in. And like I said, uh, we've we've made marks you know so i don't have to worry about the positioning or looking down through the holes to make sure i'm lined up on my flats and different things like that we're just going to put it in line up the marks and we're good to go so let me get it slipped in here fuzz on there all 
right, so I've lined up my marks. Now I can take my set screws and go ahead and just snug them back down and I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, loosely snugging them down and rocking the barrel and feeling my way into position, you know what I mean? Those marks actually are a great uh, little cheat for you, you know? It makes the whole process that much easier. So now remember the shorter the shorter uh, set screw goes into the rear. So I'm gonna get these started by hand and then just feed them down in with the wrench. And now I'm gonna snug them down this way. And you only need to snug them down. You know, you don't need to crank and reef on these things or you're gonna strip them out. You're gonna strip out that aluminum. And then what you're gonna feel from there, once you break that point, is you're going to feel less and less tension. So you're going to actually think you're, you know, you've got further to go and uh, just don't do it. Don't strip them out. It's not, it's gonna be a headache. And then you've gotta re-tap them and go with, you know, a bigger screw. And uh, it's just not a good deal to do, so. Just snug them down, you know, get a little bit of flex into your Allen, Allen wrench and uh, that's it. You do not need to reef them and they'll be fine. Nothing's, uh, nothing's going nowhere. All right, so we've got our barrel remounted exactly in the same position that it was before. And we know that because of our little cheat marks we put on there. And, uh, you know, you can barely see them. If you're using a moderator and you keep your shroud off, all it's going to take is a rag and a, and a quick wipe and you can rub them right off of there. So no need to worry there. And like I said, what I will do then is take a drop of the silicone oil and stick down in here and go right directly onto the breech seal with it. Now I'm going to run the probe in and out just a few times. And I'm going to decock the gun so that I can close the pellet probe. All right. Now, like I said, I also, to maintenance the breech seal and keep it in good condition, I put a drop of silicone oil. You can use anything. You can use Crossman, uh, you know, wh whatever the heck it is, you know, the, the breech oil or whatever they got, you know, as long as you're using, uh, I would recommend an oil rather than a grease. Um, I just find that grease attracts dust and muck and, you know, the oil seems to work out a little better. So um, the oil then offers a little bit of lubrication and uh, allows that O-ring to seat you know, properly and quickly when that high pressure air forces it back and in, in, in into the clearance gap. And uh, it also offers it a little bit of protection uh, from the elements, you know, a little bit of a coating over it. So um, that's why I do that there. Now, uh, we've got everything, the barrels mounted back up. Let me get the rail on here real quick. And while I'm doing that, I will talk about uh, barrel cleaning. Now, over time, I have you know, tried all kinds of stuff. Pretty much, if you can think of it, I've, I've done it, you know, I would say. And I've even tried brush cleaning some of my barrels, you know, after remove the breech seal. If you're going to uh, use a brush of any kind, I would recommend removing the breech seal. But, um, you know, I've kind of tried it all. And what I found in the end was that I was kind of uh, wasting money and overthinking things and, and doing way too much, more than I needed to. Now, because our guns are not firearms and we don't have the byproducts of the explosion of gunpowder and all that kind of residue and stuff like that, things are much simpler. All we've got to deal with is lead dust and lead buildup in the rifling of the barrel. So what I like to do is, and by the way, uh, I've got these snug back down, our two screws. Again, you don't need to reef them down, you know, just snug them up good. Uh, if you know you've got a solid setup going on and you're not going to be up into your gun for a while, you might even just put a dab of Loctite on each of them if it makes any difference to you. But uh, I haven't used Loctite for a while. And, um, you know, if, you're so if your setup is solid and, and everything is tight and snug down, 
you'll be just fine. Uh, I don't, I don't notice anything on the gun ever to come loose from vibration or anything like that. And I even carry the gun when I'm hunting a lot of times right up under the scope and use it kind of as a handle, you know? And, uh, like I said, as long as your setup is solid and nothing should go anywhere. So anyways, barrel cleaning, um, I'll re when I get a gun and I get a brand new gun, I'll remove the barrel like you just saw, I'll pull the breech seal, and then I'll use a rod, and I'll use patches, and I'll use some kind of a solvent, like a heavy solvent uh, infused cleaner or whatever, and that's just to get those uh, anti-rust oils and all that muck out of there that a lot of times you can find in a gun uh, when you get it new. You definitely want to give it a real good squeaky dry clean, you know, on that first rip, you know, you want to get it get it nice and clean, get everything out of there. Like I said, I use a heavy solvent with, uh, with the rod, you know, and patches. And then from that point on, once I, once I've done that and I've got those initial, uh, greases and oils and all that factory stuff out of there from that point on, I personally don't use any chemicals. I don't use ballast all when I clean my barrels. Uh, I don't use anything. What I do use is a gun rope. Now I've found this brand SME to be uh, my favorite and I'll tell you why they do not have the brush uh, like a boar snake or some of the other ones they don't have the brush incorporated into uh, you know the, the pull through cleaning part of it so you basically just got you know your shoestring and your pull through and their brush apparatus and everything else is a separate pull through so I like that because I've used like the boar snakes in the past and I've had to cut out the brush and reattach things and stuff. So once I found uh, this this SME brand, I, I found that I like it the best. And not only that, uh, with the brushes not being incorporated onto the rope, I found these to be very, very tight fitting, you know. So um, as opposed to some of the other ones, you know, they all fit tight, but I've found these to be very tight. You know, the first time I ripped one of these down through the barrel, uh, I honestly thought, I might be in trouble and get it stuck up in there because I thought I might snap the, the string or whatever, you know, but uh, that's never happened and uh, it's worked out real well. And we all know that our groups start to open up and uh, funny things start happening, occasional flyers and different stuff uh, when our barrels are getting fouled. So in each of my guns, I kind of know where that is and I kind of know the signs and I know what to look for. And I can usually tell immediately when it's happening and I know why it's happening. And then that's what I'll do. And generally uh, one pull with that tight gun rope. I mean, you've got to think that thing's fitting really super tight, you know, and it's two feet long or whatever. That's like running probably, uh, you know, 70 patches through your barrel or something all at once, you know, consecutively just pulling. So I've found that to be the most effective method and I've even tested it out where I'll, I'll run it through once or twice and then I'll take a patch, you know, with some, uh, with some, uh, ballast all or something and run it through with the rod just to see what's left in the barrel, if anything. And, uh, rarely can I even get the, uh, you know, any color onto the cloth of any kind, you know, of any residue. So like I said, it's very effective and very simple. So I don't, you know, now I don't use chemicals. I don't, I don't deal with ballast all anymore or anything. And then, like I said, every time that I get to that point that my barrel needs a cleaning because it's fouled up and I know it's time, I'll run the gun rope a couple times and then I'll put a drop of the silicone oil right directly onto the breech seal and uh, help the breech seal out that way. So that is how I clean my air gun barrels. Sweet and simple, you know, one and done pretty much, you know, I've never pulled one of those more than twice through a gun and it's just, it's just squeaky clean. So very effective and uh, I would recommend it. But anyways, I hope the video was helpful and I hope you guys are uh, out there jamming away with your flash pups, just having a blast. Hopefully I can get some uh, hunting footage up soon. I haven't had much chance and now I've been working with a couple other new guns that I got. So time's been a little limited kind of in every direction but uh we'll get there so anyways happy shooting to you guys and uh take it easy we'll see you on the next one